What is faith? We, we ask everyone to have faith. Scriptures talk about faith everywhere. We hear the word faith everywhere we look at. But what is that? What is faith? Many people, many people may think that faith is just a belief. A belief in something without any sort of evidence or proof for veri- verification. Or a belief in something that requires no proof. Or even worse, other people may think that faith, faith is just a feeling. Something that just makes us feel good. But my dear family, my dear brothers and sisters, If this is our faith, and if that's the faith that maybe our brothers or sisters believe in, I'm sad to say that we are gravely mistaken. These views of faith make faith look unreasonable or irrational, or it turns faith into a mere feeling, a feeling that is not stable, that moves with our moods. But faith, faith is stable. So what is that? What is faith? First, let me try not to bore you with philosophy and theology. So I'm going to do my best. So let us do some exercises, some mental exercises. There are three ways that human beings come to know things. So let's talk about the first one. Think, for instance, or just imagine yourselves wanting to boil water. How do you come to know that the water is boiling? You may say something like, well, because I see it boiling, or I hear it boiling. It is happening right in front of me, so I know it's boiling. In other words, you come to know that you're boiling water because you experience it through your senses. The first way to come to know things, through our senses. Then let's do a second mental exercise. Think, for instance, of yourselves doing mathematics. Maybe you don't want to think about that right now. But think of yourselves doing mathematics. Two plus two equals four. But how do you know that? You don't really need to have two things put together with another two things so that you know it's four. You can easily do it in your head. So how do you know that? You come to know that because it is evident to your mind. It is evident to reason, which is the second way we come to know things through reason. Now, let's talk about the third. There is a third way to come to know things. And it is not through the senses nor through the mind. This third way is through belief in the word of a testimony given by a trustworthy person. So think, for instance, the third and last mental exercise. When you ask your parents about your birthday, You say something like, when is my birthday? And they tell you, your birthday birthday is this date. But you believe that witness. Why? You were not there to prove you were born on that date. You just believe your mother who saw you being born. She was present there. And she tells you that that was your birthday. I don't think everyone here goes around asking their parents to prove that they were born on their birthday. We just believe in a trustworthy witness. We believe in their word. And that happens in many things that we do in life. We believe those who are experts, those who know what they're talking about. My dear family, my dear brothers and sisters, this is what faith is. Faith is coming to know things based on the word of a trustworthy person or a trustworthy witness. It is not just a feeling nor a belief, but it is evident to the eye of the soul. It is evident to us. So why did I spend so much time on this subject of faith? I did so because today today is the feast of Corpus Christi, which is the feast of the body of Christ. Or in other words, today we celebrate and we confess that we truly believe in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in the bread and in the wine as the flesh and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we believe that? Because Christ has told us, a trustworthy witness. His disciples have told us. Many witnesses have told us. In fact, our Lord 
our God wants our faith to be so reasonable that he provides Eucharistic miracles for us to see so that we may come to believe. Now you may be wondering, what is a Eucharistic miracle? A Eucharistic miracle refers usually to a miracle where the bread and the wine truly become flesh and blood before the eyes of the people so that we may venerate it. There have been countless amounts of these miracles around the world and throughout the centuries, and there has been countless amounts of scientific research on these events. One example, one example is one that happened recently, in the year 2013, in Legnica, Poland. Why am I emphasizing on recent? The year 2013. That means that they had the modern technology capable to perform advanced tests. One of those tests for this miracle in Poland, Legnica, was from the Department of Forensic Medicine in Poland, a reputable secular department. And I say secular because they're not even believers, a, a trustworthy witness. They performed studies on this miracle in Poland, and they studied it, and they came up with the following conclusion. Quote, In the histopathological image, the tissue fragments were found which contained the fragmented parts of a cross-strated muscle. The whole image is most similar to cardiac muscle, with changes that often occur when deep agony is experienced. The DNA tests indicate that this tissue is of human origin." End quote. My dear family, we as Catholics, we believe in the testimony of the Word of God. We believe in this trustworthy witness, the Logos, or the Word, Christ Himself. We believe in what He says. We believe that when He said in today's Gospel, that his bread is true food and it's also true flesh, his flesh, and that whoever eats his flesh will have eternal life, we believe that he meant it. He was not just pulling a prank on his disciples, nor joking with them. How do we know that? Because we see how he kept going on and on and on on the same point. It's a long gospel where he keeps repeating the same thing. This is my flesh. This is my body. Whoever eats of me will have eternal life. And he keeps repeating that multiple times. And the Jewish crowd quarreled among themselves and started asking each other, how is this possible? He has gone crazy. They thought he has gone crazy. And they started leaving him. Hence, my dear family, we are invited in this feast to this mystery of love to believe in the word of a trustworthy witness, to believe that the bread and the wine do truly become the flesh and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at Mass. And we do that through faith. Do we have faith?